everlasting father we worship you king of glory we honor you the beginning and the end we exalt you god before whom we all come from and we shall all return so lord we give you the glory we thank you lord because of your word thank you lord because your word is perfect your word breaks asunder all the fiery darts of the enemy in our lives so lord we thank you for your god of possibilities for your words is with god all things are possible we thank you lord because of our different situations different circumstances obstacles successes happiness and joy that we have in our lives we thank you lord because we can look unto you and say yes lord you are the rock of Gibraltar. you are the rock upon which we stand so lord as we look at your word this morning lord minister to each and every one of us including i the speaker so that lord your word will translate us so that your word will give us hope give us life give us assurance that we have in you the psalmist says your word i have hid in my heart that i might not sin against you lord give us the grace to engrave your word to hide your word in our hearts so that we do not sin against you so lord we exalt you we glorify your name thank you lord for this beautiful day that you have made in which we we'll rejoice and be glad indeed Thank you, Lord, because we know that when we rejoice, heaven rejoices. When we sing unto you, heaven sings. When we adore you, the angels, the cherubim, and the seraphim, they are worshiping you. So, Lord, we thank you because you are the resurrection and life. Thank you, Lord, because you are going to translate us, Lord, each and every one of us from a lukewarm attitude to that life of glory. Because this life is a stage. We are today, tomorrow we may never be. And Lord, give us the grace to walk faithfully until you call us home. Because your word says it is appointed unto man who wants to die, and after death, the judgment. And the judgment of God is inevitable on each and every one of us. So Lord, prune us. Lord, wash us clean and make us whole. Lord, we just honor your holy name. We thank you, Lord, for hearing us. For we have prayed in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. You are most welcome this morning to rejoin us as Saskatchewan, Canada. This is where this message is being preached. And the Bible says the word of God is powerful, sharper than two edged sword, piercing into the hearts and marrows of everybody. You see, when people go to church at times, they think, oh, this message is meant for John. Or it's meant for Debbie, it's meant for Fola, it's meant for Karen. That is not true. If you listen to every message, including the speaker, including the preacher, you will see that God has a message for you. And nobody is immune from being chastised by the Lord. Because the Bible says, the son that the father loveth, he chastiseth. So as we listen to this important topic this morning, it shall be titled, with God, nothing shall be impossible. And our text is taken from the book of Luke, chapter 1, verse 37. Luke, as we all know, Bible students, was a great physician. And when you look at the book of Luke, the perspective is different from Matthew, Mark, and John. But what is important is the concept of with God, nothing shall be impossible. We all have obstacles in life. We have difficult situations and that we say, Lord, what do I do? Day by day, God is able to take what was formless and desolate with a simple command and he created this life into existence. The opening chapter of the Bible is what I want us to look at. Genesis 1.1 The Lord created heaven and earth and day by day he made everything possible when you look at the incredible creation of the word of god as first miracle history is filled with countless accounts miraculous events that are documented in the bible and i just want 
us to realize one thing when we look at the bible it is a non-fiction book some bible scholars they say well there are some fiction that this with your imagination but when i look at it from genesis to revelation i regard it as a non-fiction and for non-fiction these are historical events some of them are prophetic that are yet to be fulfilled and some have been fulfilled when we look at the book of isaiah the lord talks about because the lord talks to his people he talks about the coming of the lord he talks about the coming of messiah that is in the old testament and that is why when you look at the bible i look at it as a non-fiction and we are going to look at some examples in the bible this morning not examples from my own life that i have experienced that may come in as the holy spirit needs but we look at God of possibilities. God of possibilities. When we look at this world, there are many things in life that make you and I perplex. We are so discouraged because we are all human. At times I have headache. At times I say, Lord, what's going on here? Because I'm human. But one thing that is different is that I'm able to call upon the Lord. And say, Lord, he says, cast all your cares and anxieties on you, for I care so much about you. And that's why we are going to look at God of possibilities, because with him, all things are possible. We are going to look at few examples this morning, few examples of God of possibilities, and we realize from the scripture, and so you will be able to appropriate this into your life, into your relationship, that this obstacle, this problem that I see, is not going to be the end of me. And that is what the Lord is saying to somebody that is listening this morning. Somebody that thinks that his circumstance is just beyond repair. You think that your situation is just over. I remember one year, I can't remember the definite date. I was just entering our church. I, when I was at the Regina Apostolic Church in Regina, and this lady, I know her very well, she knows me very well. I met her just as I was entering the church. I said, how are you doing? Oh, she said, you don't want to know. It's very bad. I said, is anything too difficult for God? Nothing shall be impossible. Then this lady said, oh, this one is beyond God. I said, you see, God is going to do his miracle in your life. And behold, we had a church service that morning, and we made another call. And this lady came out, she was slain in the spirit. She was just rolling on the carpet, saying, Lord, I thank you for ministering to me. There is nothing that God cannot do. There is nothing that is impossible with him. But the only thing is, you and I have to focus our eyes on God. Because when we focus our eyes on him, all our difficulties, all our problems, they become extinct. But when you focus your eyes on those problems, they become magnified and magnified. We're going to look at some Bible examples. Abraham and Sarah conceived at their old age. Abraham and Sarah conceived at their old age. Before we go into that area, I want just to remind us some of, some of us who are not in medical circles, some of us who are not in obstetrics and gynecologists, as that is my own profession. You see, when we look at conception, I'll just remind us of something briefly. Age is the single biggest factor affecting a woman's chance to conceive and have a healthy baby. You don't have to be a doctor to know that. A woman's fertility starts to reduce in her early 30s and more so after the age of 35. The risk of pregnancy complication increase as women age. And when you look at the most fertile period, women are most fertile and have the best chance of getting pregnant in their twenties. This is the time when you have the highest number of good quality eggs available in your ovaries and your pregnancy risk are lowest. At age 25, your odds of conceiving after three months of trying are just under 20%. As a woman ages, the risk increases for miscarriage for having an embryo with abnormal chromosomes 
for so many things. Same thing applies to men. A is known to reduce the quality of semen, which affects the semen's ability to reach or fertilize an egg. In your 50s, you can bring there about a few conception issues. They are very rare, including the inability to release eggs, lack of fertilization, and an increased risk of miscarriage. In this situation, you might be looking at a possible gestational carrier. That is, you look for somebody who may be able to carry the baby for you. We call this surrogacy. I've passed some of my patients in Canada who have been involved in such situation. Another woman who carry your child to town. So when we look at it from human angle, from the knowledge that you have today, it is virtually impossible. You see, when we talk of miracles, some of you, when you have headache, somebody prays for you, you say the headache is gone. I'm not saying healing of headache is not a miracle, but from my own medical knowledge, when you have headache, the blood vessels are in disarray. And you have what you call visual constriction, the blood vessels that supplies the brain, is realized they have reduced blood supply, and that gives you headache. And this is not really a permanent event. It can come and go. But the kind of miracle that I, because of my profession, receive, the kind of miracle that I look at in the scripture, when you look at this immaculate conception, this is a miracle. Because I know it is not just possible from human angle. When people talk of, you are healed of this, you are healed of that, I pray God, I say, God, show me that mighty power of yours. Because you know that I have a heart of science. You gave it to me. And the same thing applies to some of you who are doubters. When you hear the word of God this morning, I'm sure you are going to know that God that we serve is a God of miracles. The Bible says the Lord was gracious to Sarah, as he has said, and the Lord did for Sarah what he had promised. Verse 2, we are reading from the book of Genesis. Sarah became pregnant and bore his son to Abraham in his old age, at the very time God had promised him. You see, when God promises you something, it will, it will come to pass. When God says, yes, I am the I am, I'm going to do it, you just need to your breath, wait patiently upon the Lord, because it is not easy, it is not fun to wait upon the Lord. But the Bible says they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength, she shall not up with wings as eagles. Because when you wait upon the Lord, He strengthens you. When you wait upon the Lord, when God does it, He does His own thing at the appointed time. Abraham gave the name Isaac to the son Sarah bore him. When his son Isaac was eight days old, Abraham circumcised him as God commanded him. Abraham was a hundred years when his son Isaac was born to him. <laughs> Abraham was a hundred years old. And when you look at conception, nine months. So you can imagine at the age that Abraham actually uh, met with Sarah and he conceived that was a late age. When you look at what happens to what you call spermatogenesis, spermatogenesis is the process of semen development. When you look at even men at this age, some of them, they are already impotent. They cannot have erection. But you see, God that you serve is a God that regenerates the body. It's a God that nothing is impossible with him. That's why I tell you that the story that we are looking at from the scripture this morning Will be what is impossible with human beings. But my Lord and my Savior says, With God, nothing shall be impossible. Nothing shall be impossible. I told you about the story of my own daughter, who is a family doctor and was pregnant six weeks and two days. And what happened? She started bleeding. And an ultrasound scan was done around 4 30, 5 o'clock in the evening. She was about to pass the products of conception. And what happened was that they told her that if you do not pass it within 48 hours, we we'll have to do a DNC or give you some medication to expel it. And when the doctor said that, I said, no, this is not going to happen. We pray. Seven of us in the room, myself, the consultant radiologist, consultant maternal, maternal medicine, myself, my wife, 
the husband and the and the technician. And they say, What's going on at the Indiana General Hospital? And we pray. And I say, Lord, this is not a portion. And the following day, she went to do an ultrasound scan by around 10 20 in the morning. Behold, my son in law phoned me. He said, Dad, Dad, I said, Yes. He said, The heart rate is there. The one to beats my minute. I want to tell you, my listener, God that we serve is a God of possibilities. It's only with God. I wasn't a miracle worker. The only thing I just did was in obedience to the word of God, pray. And I told my daughter, I said, listen, the Lord promised you happiness. He promised that no barrenness shall be in the household of God. And there are some of you listening. Don't give up. Don't give up. Don't give up what God is saying unto you. Because with God, nothing shall be impossible. And I'll tell you another testimony of a couple that came to see me from Saskatoon in Saskatchewan. The wife was about 44, 45 with large multiple fibroids. Fibroids, they have benign growth in the uterus. They are quite common among blacks and nation. And I removed her fibroids. She said, I still want to have babies. Well, I don't doubt you, but at this age, things are looking impossible. It wasn't because of my prayer. This woman left, and behold, a year after she was 45, phoned me from Saskatoon that, behold, she's pregnant. Are you kidding me? She said yes. And she came all the way from Saskatoon to Regina to meet me. We did an ultrasound scan. Everything was fine. She was coming almost on a three, four weekly basis from Saskatoon until she was about 36 weeks. And I told her, I said, I have excellent colleagues in Saskatoon at the Royal University Hospital. Go there. And she went there and they did an elective cesarean section for her at 37 weeks. And healthy baby born. I want to tell you with God. Nothing shall be impossible. He does it at his appointed time. I'm sure that Abraham would have wished that Sarah was pregnant at a younger time. Because at a younger age, you can cuddle the baby. And when the baby wakes up at night, you help your wife to change the nappy and everything. But this was not God's plan. God has a purpose for you. You are listening to me. Don't be discouraged. Don't be dismayed. Because at the appointed time, God brought his purpose and plan to pass in Abraham and Sarah's wife. What seemed totally impossible at the old age of 100 for Abraham and 90 for Sarah. By the time you are 90, I operated on some mid 85 year old. You look at the ovary, the ovary has shriveled. It's become like just a remnant. But God blessed this special couple with their son, Isaac. Which upon which God established his covenant as an everlasting covenant for his descendants after him. I want you to know that there is nothing that is impossible with God. You have what sounds like an impossible situation this morning. You've been having that abdominal pain. You've been to all doctors, you've been to everywhere. It looks as if nothing is impossible. But I want you to know that with God, all things are possible. With God, all things are possible. With God, all things are possible. Because what you read in the Bible, I want you to apply it to your life. When you have headache, when you have pain, don't go to people who will discourage you. Listen to the word of God and talk to people of likewise mind. I want you to know the whole Israelite community set out from Elim and came to the desert of sin which is between Elim and Sinai. That's what I'm reading from Exodus, Exodus chapter 16. The Israelites said to them, if only we had died by the Lord's hand in Egypt, there we sat around pots of meat and ate all the food we wanted. But you have brought us out into this desert to starve this entirely assembly to death. You know this story very well. The children of Israel, they were a bunch of slaves in Egypt. And Egypt wasn't an imaginary country. When I was growing up in Africa and reading the Bible, I didn't know much of geography when I was in elementary school. When they talk about Egypt, they talk about Jerusalem, I thought they were imaginary places. 
until I started doing geography, I saw them on the map. Then it became real to me. The children of history, what happened was that they were a bunch of slaves in Egypt. And by God's mighty hand, he delivered them. And when you look at the map, look at where Egypt is, look at Israel. The journey was supposed to take them 40 days, but it took them 40 years because of their unbelief. What happened here is what I want us to look at. The Lord said to Moses, I will rain down bread from heaven for you. You see, when you are in a difficult situation, it is natural to murmur. It is natural to say, God, why have you allowed this to happen? Same thing the children of Israel were doing here. And when they murmured unto Moses, they said, why have you brought us into this desert? The Lord said to Moses, I love the Bible. I love the scriptures. I love what comes out of it. Because when you see men and women of God, we read that the Lord said to them, the Lord talks to them, you are here this morning. You say, oh, the Lord talks. How does he talk? I don't know how he talks. I want you to remember that the Lord is talking to you because he talks to me, even a sinner, redeemed by his grace. There is nothing that is impossible with God. So what happened, the Lord said to Moses, I will rain down bread from heaven for you. The people are to go out each day and gather enough for that day in this way. I will test them and see whether they will follow my instruction. You see what? When God delivers you from certain situation, when God is ready to set you free, God puts certain tests before you to see whether you will be steadfast. And I want you to remember this song. The steadfastness of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. He are new every morning, new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness, O Lord. Great is thy faithfulness. I want you, you are listening to me, to remember the faithfulness of the Lord. The pain you are going through, your prodigal son, your prodigal daughter that has decided to follow the way of this world without following the way of the Lord. Take heart. I'm talking to you as a child of God. I'm talking to that mother that is listening to me. Because the heart of mothers, women, their heart of gold. I'm not saying that men don't have pure heart, but when it comes to their children, they are the ones that have sleepless nights in most cases. That prodigal son, that prodigal daughter, they will come in both. Just know that with God, all things are possible. And what happened that the Lord gave them a deliverance, a breakthrough, and at the same time, God was testing them. Moses said, you will know that it was the Lord when he gives you meat to eat in the evening and not the bread you want in the morning. Because he says, I am your provider. You see, when God decides to provide for you, and nobody can stop it. And you are listening to me this morning. Life is so hard financially. I declare heaven as a man of God, as a prophet of God. Lord, that, that this individual that is listening to this message, Lord, that Lord, heaven will open for blessings. Heaven, heaven will open for abundant blessings, Lord, that you be able to say, yes, you feel my God. You are not grumbling against us, but against the Lord. Then Moses told Aaron, say to the entire Israelite community, come before the Lord, for he has heard your grumbling. You see, God says he has heard your grumbling. The same way God told me that he has heard my grumbling. I know for many years, myself and my wife, because of the attack of the enemy of our household, the members of your family shall be your enemies. We did not see our children for about three to four years without any offense against them. But they think we have offended them. But the moment they, my eldest son, comes home, he felt bewildered. He just couldn't believe it. And I want you to, be, to remember. I want you to know that the Lord hears your grumbling. The Lord, the Lord knows what you are going through. And the Lord God of Abraham, I'm telling you my own testimony. That God will intercede on your behalf. That God will bring, bring a breakthrough in your life. Because faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. The Lord said to Moses, I've had the company of Israelites. The Lord is telling me this morning that he's had your company. He said, tell them at twilight, 
you will eat meat, and the morning you will be filled with bread. The Lord will know. Then you will know that I am the Lord your God. And because God promised, His promise is yea and amen. When you look at God's favor, God promises. When God does certain things, He wants us to keep our own power. And while I'm trying to just round up this message, I want you to know that God wants you to be a promise keeper. And I'm going to repeat it again. God wants you to be a promise keeper. There's a society they call the promise keeper. A lot of men go for that meeting. They have an organization. I want you to be, remember that God wants you to be a promise keeper. Because when you keep the promise of God, when you keep his word and his ordinances, then you can stand before him, even when the enemy is attacking. Because the Bible says, in this world, tempest time shall come, tribulation shall come. He said, be ye joyous, for I have overcome the world. The joy of the Lord will be your strength. Even when you are a child of God, you've done your part for relatives, for this, for that, and they decide to call your name to do everything, I want you to know that the Lord is there for you. He knows about every situation that pertains to you. We have been called names as a family. There's nothing you cannot imagine, but I want you to know that that God will fight your battle for you. That God will never leave you. That God will never forsake you. He said, the Lord said to Moses, how long will you refuse to keep my commands and my instructions? You see, some of the people went out on the seventh day to gather it, but they found none. The Lord promised, has the timetable, how he's going to provide for their, for their need. But they were disobedient. Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. And we are going to look at that before we conclude this morning. Those of you who have never been on sea, I have been on sea in the past. Either through a boat, either through a ship. This is a story that we all know quite well. When the children of Israel left Egypt, Moses by God's mighty hand, said deliverance for Pharaoh to allow them to go. And all of a sudden, all of a sudden, in Exodus chapter 13, when you read it, what happens was that the children of Israel, they were in the, in the desert. And Moses realized, who are we going to use as slaves? You see, when you are a child of God, the enemy of your souls doesn't want you to be liberated. That is why he doesn't want you to pray. That is why when you want to pray, you feel tired. That is why husband and wife, they cannot pray. Somebody was telling me, a close friend, about a couple that you know, they are Christians, that the wife is already out of the house, and I'm praying, and we prayed last night, I'm praying for that couple to be restored. I'm praying for that home to be restored. Because the enemy of your souls knows that when husbands and wife pray together in a home, there is salvation, there is deliverance. And I want to reassure you, that you are in this particular situation, you are listening to this word, you are listening to this message. God that never faced, God of Abraham, God of Isaac, God that parted the rest of the two, that God is going to speak into your situation. What happened was miraculous. When we read Exodus chapter 14, we don't have time to read it this morning. The Pharaoh king of Egypt said, I'm going to pursue the children of Israel. When you are set in deliverance, the enemy of your souls will still pursue you. That is why when you become a child of God, certain things you don't want to do, you realize the taste, the appetite is there. And unless you say, Lord, deliver me. Lord, set me free. Unless you are sanctified. That's why the process of sanctification is a gradual process. That's why you as a child of God, you should not condemn X or Y because they are not living in faith and in victory. You remain steadfast. You remain unshakable. Because they may be going through their own process of sanctification. And what happened was that the king said, I'm going to pursue this Israelite. And you can imagine, he chose the, uh, the most handsome people chose the warriors, those who are heavy fighters, and all these chariots. And the children of Israel, they saw the Egyptian with Pharaoh, with everything coming from uh, on top of them. Oh, they were, they were perplexed. They were perplexed. What did they do? They turned unto Moses. When you read Exodus chapter 14, you will see what I'm telling you there. 
I don't have it in front of me. But starting from verse 13, they look unto Moses. They say, Moses, why have you decided to let us perish in the desert? You should have left us in the desert. Oh, oh. you should have left us in Egypt. You should have left us all kinds of excuses. But what happened? Moses looked unto God. The children of Israel, they were looking unto Moses, but Moses then looked unto God. Moses said, Be still. The teacher that thou says today, thou shalt see them no more. So I pray for you, listen to me. That obstacle, that difficulty that you focus your eyes upon, you will see them no more. The Bible says in verse 15, The Lord shall fight the battle for you. That is God that we serve. And before we conclude this morning, I want us to look at the book of Daniel. I love the book of Daniel. I've read it. I don't know how many times I've read that book. We are just going to look at Daniel chapter 6. That is what we are going to conclude for the next five minutes. Daniel chapter 6. You see, when you look at Daniel, he wasn't only the slave that was in Babylon at that time. No. There were many of them. But when you look at Daniel chapter 1, you start from verses 8 to 12. You see, verse 12. You see, the Bible says, Daniel purported in his heart that he will not defile himself. Some of you listen to me, you are here in a foreign country, you have defiled yourself with things that are not of God. May God set you free. May God set me free. May God set deliverance into every situation that pertains to defiling. There are some, when I was in UK, they used somebody's social insurance number or social security number as an identity. They are Debbie in the morning, at night, they become Victoria. They used their, their number to go and walk, to go and do some odd works. And they are children of God. I know them. And I talk to some of them. I say, why are you doing this? this why is this is not of God? And when I arrived the first week of uh, August, the first week of September 1985 in England, they thought I was weird. And I had a pastor of Four Square Church who came to meet me. He said, listen, this is England. This is not Nigeria. Don't allow your Christianity that you do, uh, uh, you are serving in Nigeria, your scriptural union, to blindfold you. He said, here we will tell you how to survive. Okay? And he said, your family is coming to join you. Yes, I said, but I don't know where. You know what is what he said? Oh, he said, yeah, because your family is coming to join you, something is going to happen. I said, what is going to happen? He said, you need to apply for an accommodation. I said, yes, I know. How do I apply for accommodation? He said, when we go to the council house, the council office, in that is in Pennington, in London, where I was staying with my aunt in law. He said, you will apply, okay? So, brought me the application. He said, when you apply, they ask you whether married, single, divorced, or whatever. I said, yes, I know that my past was married. He said, the number of children, the minimum you will put is four. I said, I agree with that. Then he said, what then happens is that the course you want to apply ahead of time. You see, the devil comes in a certain way to deceive you. And I pray that you are listening to me, you will be delivered. You will be set free. He said, so when you get there, you will go with my wife. Which is, I will go with his wife. I said, with your wife? What do I say when I go with your wife? To say that your wife is my wife. He said, that is what we do. That is what happens. This is not a question of being religious. Okay? Then he said, you will go with my children and I will, all the names and their date of birth, you will memorize it. I will tell you. Then what do I do? Then I go and apply for a council flag. And I look at him. I say, bro, do you know that God of Abraham, God of Isaac, is the one that told me to come here? If that God wants to do his will and purpose in my life, I will not go down on my life. Or I will go down on my knees. I will never, never, never lie. And I tell you, since 1973, when I accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior, I can tell you, I have not meant a single lie purposely to deceive anybody. I would rather allow myself to be punished. I would rather allow to say the truth 
So this man just looked at me and said, there is something wrong with your brain. And he left. Then I refused to do it. Within two or three weeks, I had to leave the house of my aunt-in-law and I went to live in another house. And also, so many things this pastor told me. He said, oh, it's cold in this Western world, especially in London. You will have to drink, you have to drink some alcohol, you need something to... In there was, I just could not just imagine. And these are people who will go there on Sunday to preach the word of God. You are listening to me. Don't listen to your pastor. Don't listen to me that is speaking to you. Listen to the word of God. Listen to the deliverance message that comes by being obedient. So this is what happened to Daniel. Daniel remained steadfast. And Daniel was cast into the den lions. And Daniel was cast into the lion, lion's den. You see what happened. Daniel answered, The God that I serve is able to deliver me. The God that I serve. Because the king issued a decree in Daniel 6, 8. And he put it in writing. And he wanted them to worship him. I don't know what you are worshiping. Is it God of prosperity? Because prosperity is the order of the day now. People don't listen to the word of God. You will be prosper. Amen. You will be prosperous. Amen. You will have this. Amen. I want you to know that God wants you to prosper. What he says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. If you and I will be obedient to the word of God and seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, every other thing shall be added unto us. And so what happened? Daniel was cast in the den of life. And as punishment for praying to God, King Darius threw Daniel into the lion's den to what was considered a certain death. You can imagine that a lion points at you, you are dead. By morning fall, they were shocked to see that nothing, nothing, absolutely nothing, nothing happened to Daniel. And at that moment, they couldn't deny the miracle they had witnessed and began to proclaim the glory and majesty of the God that saved Daniel. So, Lord, I pray for all those that are listening to me this morning. King of glory, the I am that I am, Lord, in every situation that they face. Prove yourself that they are God of possibilities. Because your word says with God, not with any preacher, not with any geo, not with any evangelist, but with God. Nothing shall be impossible. So, Lord, I just speak your word into every situation that pertains to myself, that pertains to the listeners, that pertains to our children, that pertains to our grandchildren, that pertains to your children, your grandchildren, that pertains to this nation, that pertains to everything around us. Lord, we just pray that deliverance, Lord, will be saved. That, Lord, you are God of possibilities. You will breathe your possible possibilities into every situation that pertains to your children, Lord. Father, that you wipe away their tears and that your name will be exalted. Father, we just worship you. We thank you, Lord, because we know that nothing shall be impossible with you because of your word. Absolutely nothing. Nothing is too difficult for you. Father, we worship you. We glorify your holy name. Have a glorious week for me. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen.